International Women's Day. Sretan vam Međunarodni dan žena. Lijepo vas je opet vidjeti. A lot of time has passed since we were last able to meet in Zagreb and host our annual conference and award ceremony. We felt too much time had passed and it was time to reconnect and find an opportunity to hear how everyone is doing and to celebrate our incredible Croatian women of influence and our leading ladies found all around the world. So thank you for being with us today. I am thrilled to welcome three of our winners and we are thrilled to announce that we now have three new platforms for connecting this podcast, which you can watch on our newly formed YouTube channel and our recently launched Facebook page, which I know many of you have been asking for for a long time. So we are providing lots of ways for you to connect amongst yourselves and to continue the great work that you're doing together. As we continue along this podcast, malo ćemo na hrvatski, malo ćemo na engleski, because we have people all over the world and we're so thrilled to have the opportunity to be together again. We hope that you are surviving in this pandemic environment. We know many people have been ill and recovered, thankfully, and we know also people have lost family members to this horrendous illness, and we wish everyone all the best and send good health and much strength to everyone. We also can't continue without acknowledging the war in Ukraine right now, which is disproportionately affecting women and children who are traveling all over Europe to find safe harbor. And we encourage our members to help wherever you can, whether it be by hosting food drives and clothing drives, helping with humanitarian aid or contributing to whether it be the Red Cross in your local community or Caritas, we know that these women and children need safe harbor. They need all the basics. They're running away from war and that opens a lot of wounds that we Croatians uh, probably haven't healed from. So we are following this unraveling situation uh, with the ghosts of our past in the homeland war. So I think Croats are well-placed to understand how difficult the situation is. We send our prayers, our positive thoughts and all the strength that we can to those women and children that they do find safe harbor and that they're able to continue to rebuild their lives and that the war in Ukraine stops much sooner than, than later to all of our benefit. We're thrilled to have you here with us and I'm delighted to introduce three of our Croatian Women of Influence winners and our foremost leading ladies. Starting in Canada, we have Dr. Katarina Skolnik Alexa, who is a toxicology expert and one of our inaugural, inaugural winners. We have Antonia Trupinic, our um, badass military lady, who is a military pilot in Croatia's Air Force. She's also an entrepreneur, so doing it all like many of our women are. And Antonia is, of course, in Croatia, also one of our inaugural winners. And certainly we have out of Austria, Lucia Velician Markovic, who is one of our 2020 laureates. She is one of our badasses in human resources in the IT industry. She's also very involved in the Croatian community, serving as VP of the Association of Croatian Entrepreneurs in Vienna and Austria. And she's also part of the global HR hacking community, which is really interesting to hear as well. So we've got the military, which is quite timely. We have science and medicine. We also have HR and the IT community. And I feel like in those realms, we've covered most of the world. So all great, greatly accomplished badass women in our community that we're so thrilled to hear from. So leading ladies, looking forward to hear what you have to share today. Our theme today is navigating risk. And I think that's something we've all been able to sharpen our skills at over the last few years because risk is uh, all around us, not always huge. Sometimes the small decisions are the riskiest, but they get us to where we are today. And sometimes those decisions that lead to those uh, risky decisions also transform our lives. So I would love to hear from yourselves to kick us off. Let's hear a little bit about your journey on how you got to where you are today. Katarina, let's start in our frosty Canada. We'll start with you, please. Go ahead. Hi, good morning, Caroline. Yes, it is frosty here in Hamilton, Ontario. <laughs> um, so my journey started in science, obviously, um, when I was an undergraduate student here. 
um, at the university. After graduating, I had my first job where it became very uh, apparent that without additional education, there was no way that I was going to succeed in doing what I wanted to do. And my goal has always been to chart a career path in a world of science where I can do good to help people with the work that I do. Um, and I've always maintained that in all my decisions to lead me to where I am today. Um, each decision that I made from that point forward was to find a new way to do that. So following um, my initial role where it became apparent that additional education was required to achieve this, um, what I did was um, gain a master's and a PhD in pharmacology and toxicology. And the research focus was always helping um, people. My PhD focused on helping children, specifically children that are undergoing chemotherapy. Um, from there, I stayed at a research institute, continuing that work and moving more into the environmental area where the work focused on children and the impact of environment, environmental pollutants. Um, and once um, I had an interruption in my career due to personal health reasons, after that, I decided that I wanted to also continue this, but in a different realm, maybe not necessarily at the lab level. Um, I charted a career as a scientist and as a director in a research institute, again, helping people and looking at the impact of their work on human lives. Today, I am a general manager at a contract research organization. And some might say, well, you're not affecting people's lives directly, but I see it differently because the work that we do is for products that will be sold on the Canadian and international market. And we do the work to ensure that those products are safe for all individuals. So those are the, the choices that I've made to navigate the career to where I am today. Um, as far as risks go, it's always been a decision choice and how will this further my goal to want to help people. And that's my primary goal has always been any decision that it confronts me for a career path is always based on those um, decisions and processes there. What a great litmus test to always know sort of what your Northern star is. It makes decision-making a little bit easier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes. That's if great. You never lose focus of what you really do want it to do. You can, your path can always meander, but as long as the end goal is always what you want to achieve. And I bet somebody we know knows all about that. Antonia, why don't you share with us part of your journey? Uh, well, my journey also started like uh, probably 20 years ago uh, or even more uh, since uh, I lived here in Croatia during the Homeland War and my parents really raised me as a patriot. So probably those, their feelings uh, somehow, somehow implemented uh, in myself. So probably back then in the primary school, I already knew that I will serve my country uh, some way, somehow. Wow. So a decision about um, um, graduating uh, for military pilot was um, some, somewhere, some, somewhere in uh, high school when I, wow. when I found that there is actually a um, um, somehow some uh, 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 faculty to, to study, to be a military pilot and to serve a country on some uh, different way. Uh, back then, I didn't uh, think that uh, there are differences uh, between female or male um, zanimanje. <laughs> so um, I didn't think about uh, to be a military pilot uh, that, that is uh, just um, a profession for, for men. So I just wanted to, to serve my country on, somehow. So uh, making that decision back then was probably a huge uh, risk, probably for, for my family, not for me. That's, that's what I want to say. But uh, now I see that there was a big, big decision back then to, for a female to, uh, to go uh, that path, I mean, to follow that path. Today, of course, I'm really, really proud of my decision, but um, of course there was some uh, obstacles on the way because a lot of people uh, didn't um, 
understand why I chose that path because there are a lot of, I mean, um, easier ways for a, for a woman, for women today <laughs> to become uh, successful. So I don't know, um, I have to also apologize because I don't use English uh, so <laughs> much in my- uh, You're fantastic. Uh, my, yeah, my, my English is, uh, is, <laughs> is limited only to military abbreviations and uh, military, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so I probably will go back and forth to, to, to Croatian language uh, to describe what I want to say, but yeah, I mean, that decision back then was really a big choice for me and tek sad ja to mogu zapravo primijetiti. Uglavnom da, u međuvremenu se ono, dogodilo puno toga i napredovala sam na svom putu. Danas, kad me pitaju da li bi preporučila ženi, da postane vojna pilotkinja, rekla bi joj da stvarno razmislila puno, puno odricanja ima na ovom putu. Um, ali s druge strane, naravno, uh, ovisno, mene je srce vodilo, my instinct was uh, so huge, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, put that on side, I, I, I didn't know any other path for me. For example, when I was uh, on my exams, um, medical exams uh, for this profession, a uh, psychologist asked me, Like, do you have any alternative if, for, for example, if you fail at this exam or, I don't know, selection flying or something? And I said, no, this is what I want to study. This, this is what I want to be. And that's it. So um, probably I knew even then that uh, hard work always beats talent. So uh, I knew if I really, really want to become a military pilot or this is also my message to all women. Uh, don't uh, discourage yourself if you are not talented for something you really, really like to do. Because if you really, really work hard, you can really do anything. Uh, I know, for example, if I wanted to be a singer, even though I don't have a nice voice, <laughs> but with hard work, we can really, really do anything. So that's my message also for, for this uh, Women's Day this year. Oh, terrific. Well, I think you have talent and hard work in spades. You don't get to where you are without that. And you're just to observe, you're one of seven female pilots in yeah. the Croatian defense ministry, which is extraordinary all around. So thanks for being our resident badass. And moving on, <laughs> Lucia, share with us a little bit about how you got to where you are. Well, it's, I'd say, super, super difficult to do any kind of intro at my end after those two beautiful ladies and, and their <laughs> stories. Yeah, I, I, have to, I have to communicate that I'm completely impressed with, with your careers and the paths that you have created and navigated so far. Uh, but yeah, in a nutshell, <laughs> some things about me. Um, thank you, Caroline, for a brief intro. Uh, on top of that, what I can add is that um, initially, I actually started my career after graduating psychology in the University of Zagreb in Croatia, I started my, I'd say, typical HR, typical uh, organizational psychologist career as uh, an HR professional within various companies. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to admit that over, I don't know, few years spent in, in the corporate world, I actually saw that that's not something where I see myself, or on the other hand, that even some of my potentials are not completely um, I'd say utilized in, in such an mm. environment. And um, at that moment, it was like seven plus years ago. Um, I won't say a tremendous change, but that the most important thing in my career happened that I left the corporate career and switched to the entrepreneurship world where I actually co-founded Talent Arium or the company where, where I currently work. Um, at that moment, we were, I'd say the first, of, first company of that kind and, uh, in the creation market or uh, within the creation tech scene. And it was in a way, on one hand, difficult to um, educate or communicate what you're doing as something like that didn't exist at that moment in that particular market and within the IT industry. But over the years, I'd say that things have changed. And as Antonia communicated, that um, both hard work and yeah, hard work, I'd say, definitely pays off. This is something that I also saw within um, my, or during my career in Talentarium. Um, and over the years, 
like uh, what what brought me to to uh, this particular situation where I am right now or this particular location, as you communicated, I'm currently located in, in Austria. Our activities actually expanded to other countries, and we, in a way, um, exceeded the Croatian tech scene or Croatian tech market oh, and wow. opened um, locations or opened additional offices across the the duck region market and therefore i initially relocated to berlin and a few years later to to austria with vienna where i'm focused right now uh, but on the other hand although i've in a way migrated to to other country i have to communicate that that close connection to the creation market is definitely here as well and therefore um i in a way initiated or started uh started being more active with those voluntary activities such as being uh, closely connected to the creation entrepreneur mm -hmm. entrepreneurial scene throughout the let's say one of the associations that exists on the austrian market where my focus or goal is to help foreign entrepreneurs um in a way see the potential that a creation tech market can offer or see the potential that that croatia has uh, in comparison to other countries uh in the eastern and the central europe um I know I, I can talk for hours for other things that we're doing currently, but this is in a nutshell, uh, let's say the most important things regarding my career so far. Gosh, you really are dominating the market. Good on you for creating something new, seeing an opportunity, but such courage to move from country to country. I, I'm always fascinated by the fact that people can just get up and go and they move, whether it's company, country, opening a new market, it, you're all extraordinary. So I'm so thrilled uh, to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you for sharing your stories. Uh, this year's theme for International Women's Day is breaking the bias. And you've all touched a little bit on this. And the UN theme for International Women's Day this year is gender equality for a sustainable world. And it's interesting, I would love to hear your thoughts on how you have had to deal with biases in your, um, in your fields or in your professional or personal lives and how you've had to overcome them. And do you think that we can overcome bias in fact? And if so, how do we do it? Anybody? I think for the science world, I think when I started out, oh, pretty advice going there. <laughs> um, there was not that many women in senior science roles, but I never saw that as an obstacle. Um, for me, this is where I wanted to be, and it was never seen as something that I couldn't do. Um, it was something that you just had to work for. Um, and stay focused and not necessarily listen to the negative around you. And I think it's possible. Today in the science world, there's a lot more females in top roles, whether they be senior scientists, whether they be directors or leaders of companies. So the, the, the playing field has changed in the science area or arena. Um, more females are <laughs> taking science today than they did when I started out. Um, so there is a change, there is a shift, and I don't think gender is, is as big a deal anymore in this arena. So oh, it is changing. Um, we are, <laughs> we have to be dedicated and work hard. Um, and it is happening slowly, but it is happening. Do you think that women have to work harder to demonstrate yeah. their value than, than men, for example? For me, yes, because I personally had to do that. Choices that I made to go back to school were because I was told a long time ago by my first employer that, you know, you're not going to get where you want to get to because A, you're a woman, and B, you, don't, you lack the education. You have to have more education than your peers that are not. So those are things that have stayed with me over time. And when I was at the universities, I would the the message that I would give my female students was you can do this there's no reason why you can't achieve and a lot of my students have achieved great positions in their fields despite the fact that they you know they are women so they are doing, women <laughs> they're doing a great job um leading um you know they're now lawyers they're doctors they're you know they've achieved um and all you need to do is mentor them, show them that hard work and just staying focused 
and believing in yourself, I think is key. So we have a role to play. Let's see, how do you look at this from an HR perspective and in yeah. IT? I actually wanted to add something on top of what Stacey said in, in terms of, uh, um, let's say, how a particular part of the industry looks at, at the, those gender biases. Uh, for example, from my perspective, uh, as I'm predominantly involved in the IT market, which is also uh, like predominantly male market, mm -hmm. um, I have to also admit that, let's say, at first or while starting with Talentarium's activities, um, I frequently saw that, I mean, it, it wasn't some kind of intentional biases, but um, it frequently happened that people said, okay, do you have, I don't know, a male colleague who can, uh, who can I talk to uh, in terms of some kind of very concrete tech related stuff? Although I was, let's say, completely prepared for, for those things. But from the HR perspective or from, let's say, the, the perspective of uh, um, communicating with our clients, we currently see, I'd say again, some, something that is, I put it away like a natural shift, meaning that more and more HR professionals nowadays within the IT market actually try to or force to employ, um, I don't know, female candidates or women on the management position due to the fact that there are like almost none of them on the management positions within the IT. And there again, are hap like those biases are happening, but um, intentionally and for for different purposes this is also something that again uh, makes some kind of unfair uh, advantage for female candidates uh, for the senior management position within the it market but on the other hand i mean even with it un intentional uh, uh, or forced biases i think that um, some kind of better decisions will be made in the future However, like nowadays in, in the IT market, some kind of switch is, is also happening in terms of those gender biases. So interesting. Yeah. Well, I also, okay, can I, I also agree with both uh, Katarina and Lucia. Uh, I wanted to add something uh, when Katarina said, um, hard work not only beats talent, but also beats uh, gender. So, um, mm. That's, I mean, uh, we, are pro we are in a transition right now. Uh, 20 years ago, there was also uh, less uh, female, I mean, women uh, in military too. So today we have greater percentage than, for example, 20 years ago, but uh, it's still today, for example, in Croatian armed forces, only 14%. So 14, not 40, <laughs> <laughs> which is really, I mean, a small number of uh, female. In aviation, there's also, I mean, that's even less so, um, but it's happening. Uh, of course, we are here also here in the Croatian uh, Women's Network to, um, to make that percentage greater in all area, in all um, professions all, all over the world, also all, all domains, of course. So um, we just need to uh, maintain this path and uh, try to um, to tell uh, all women, for, uh, first of all, our daughters, to teach them uh, that they, they can be whatever they want. There is no uh, difference between female or male. I mean, um, most of journalists also ask me, uh, how come you are a female and then you become a military pilot? And I was like, how come some men can be chef or I don't know, designer <laughs> it's a female <laughs> profession not male so um i know i don't know i mean but today i think we are breaking those uh, differences and those um uh, that um uh, so i think um, the future will be will be probably uh, i mean it will be uh, better than today so i hope our daughters in the future will not have to have this conversation. <laughs> so, Wouldn't that be wonderful? Let's work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hard work beats talent and hard work and beats gender. bias and gender. Yeah. I love that. So great takeaways. So ladies, you're all uh, award winners, not just of the Croatian Women of Influence Award, but many other awards. Um, what does the oh, getting the award and having that recognition mean to you? We know from some of our past winners that on the basis of receiving the award, they've been promoted, they've made the decision to navigate risk and, and start their own firms or become entrepreneurs or change jobs or take a leap to a new industry. And it's helped be the wind in their back. 
to make those big moves. What does the award mean to you? What has it meant to you? And what's your advice to maybe your younger self or some of our younger future award winners? Who wants to start? Yeah. <laughs> I will tell them, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I actually thought about that question a lot and can decide in which direction to go or what to pick as, as the, the only answer here. Um, I have to communicate that at first, definitely um, the, the, the award itself provided additional visibility, which uh, each each of you will will communicate it or or yeah will communicate that as something that definitely values in terms of career development. But now, let's say two years after, um, I'd say that the 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 biggest takeaway or the biggest plus of of uh, of gaining that um, that award is that I in a way got a, a a positive check mark or a feedback that all of the things that I've been doing so far are on one hand as mentioned visible but also positively valued and this is something that definitely forced me or encouraged me to keep doing in the direction that I'm doing. Uh, as mentioned earlier, that the creation, uh, Croatia and the creation market is something that is, let's say, close to my heart still. Uh, I definitely got the like additional push to to continue working on on in that direction as I as I started at that moment. So definitely in, in those words or in those terms, I can communicate that the, the award was some kind of close connection to to the value that I've been trying to share with people around me or uh, yeah, the people around me. So it I'll provide some credibility, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Antonia, yeah. you've been a terrific well, supporter of CWN and the awards and, and promoting other women. So I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are. Well, um, before, before, I, uh, um, before I get this uh, uh, award, I was just thinking that I'm just doing my job, you know, <laughs> probably like every every woman all over the world. So it was like for me, okay, why me? But when I got this award, it was like, okay, you're probably doing something really um, good. I mean, um, even if you are just yourself, uh, you can influence and you can um, show somebody uh, that you are valuable. As, yes. as the way you are. So um, I know that my profession is not like, you know, I'm, uh, it's, let's say, I, I hate that um, phrase, but it's like in a men's profession, but uh, so probably because of that, uh, I was recognized, but um, I, when I got this reward, I was like, awarded, I was like, okay, just keep doing and be the best, be as you were until now. So of course, um, a lot of people recognize that, and um, I'm really, really proud. So I, I mentioned that um, uh, that I'm a, a winner since then. So um, I'm really, really proud of of that. So thank you, Caroline. <laughs> oh, our absolute yeah. pleasure. Thank you, Kath. Um, well, for me, just like for Lucia, um, she mentioned earlier that it was more of um, a personal satisfaction and Antonia did as well. So for me at that time when I won the award, it, it, was, a, it was a decision to change careers afterwards. So ah. even though I had been in the lab for many, many years, receiving the award did show that something was right. I was doing something right. It was maybe the push that I needed to say, you know what, someone else sees the hard work and there's value to it. And it pushed me into a different direction, more of a leadership role to try and mentor more um, ladies, young ladies in the science career. So it did have um, a value in that perspective um, for me anyway, personally, more so maybe because I'm in Canada, it's not a widely known because I we live here, it's not really a Croatian market, but it was more of a personal push for me. Um, to win the award and just chart a new path in my career that I would probably not have ventured on without the award. If How fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. That's so <laughs> wonderful. 
Yeah, I just want to add sometimes when I go to work, like in the morning, I have to get up. I mean, it's like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. It's so hard. I mean, there's lots of, I know, I mean, uh, easier jobs, you know, <laughs> why I do that. And then when I see this award, it's like, okay, you can do it. Somebody recognize that. And it's really, really, it's on a personal basis, of course. But yeah, thank you <laughs> for that. I'm glad well, it's a motivator. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a big, huge motiv motivator. I mean, probably I would also change my career, but with this uh, <laughs> it was like, okay, stay here and uh, show other women that yeah. uh, everybody, I mean, every woman uh, can be anything they want. So maybe my example will show somebody, some, some other women, women uh, to, you know, uh, show and to to choose to make that risk. Maybe, um, maybe I will navigate her <laughs> uh, to her career. Maybe military pilot. Maybe something else. But uh, she will um, get some uh, courage to to do that step because if she sees, okay, if she can be military pilot, I can do. I don't know. I can be a singer. <laughs> there so, you go. Hard work beats you. talent, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you're all so inspiring. Your journeys are so inspiring and hugely accomplished. And you are all courageous and made some very courageous decisions at every step of your journey. I want to check into some fun stuff right now to further help you inspire some other folks. So we're going to do our rapid fire response series of very few questions. So first thing that comes to mind, this is the good stuff. We want to really get to know you now. So <laughs> What do you like to do to relax? Lucia, start. Oh, read. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Antonia. <laughs> uh, listen to music. Okay, Kath. Go for walks. <laughs> oh, okay. So what are you reading right now, Lucia? Oh my God. <laughs> you shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> it is connected to- <laughs> Are you one of those yeah. people that reads five books at once? <laughs> no, I'm the one who reads uh, predominantly psychology related books. And the one that is on my table right now, it's oriented towards uh, the regression models and multivariate <laughs> regression. So oh my gosh. that's the so reason you're... why I said <laughs> don't ask that question. <laughs> you're still getting ready to dominate the world. I love it. Antonia, what's on your desk side table? Okay, I, I have here <laughs> something. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's like manuals for digital marketing since uh, I was like um, analytical tool for optimization of internet campaigns. <laughs> Excellent. Campaign, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I was on some education, so I have studied to do after this um, podcast. But yeah, uh, not I don't have time to, to read anything else beside this manual, so <laughs> for now. Maybe you can give us a that. tutorial another time. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah. I will help, of course. Okay, Katarina, what's on your table? Um, I'm looking at it over there. It's um, more um, books, more about improving leadership because I want to be a good leader to the younger generation and how to guide and how to lead them um, and mentor them. So I can't reach the books. So I'm extending go <laughs> your influence. How fantastic. And now we want to know what's the last thing you Googled and be honest, Kathy, go. <laughs> Honestly, Can I yes. check? San Diego for a meeting, so flights. <laughs> flights. Okay. Antonia, last thing you Googled. I don't know. I have to check. <laughs> I, I Google all day. So it's okay. so, I don't know. Let me see. Okay. Directions, um, recipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I Google just locations inside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what's the yeah. last thing you Googled? Oh, again, a super or non-interesting answer. Um, how much a nine-year, nine-month-old child has to eat? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do. I do have a, a, a smaller, <laughs> young daughter. Therefore, there are like a lot of, a uh, lot of question marks above my head. <laughs> I'm sure all the ladies can help with that too. So Absolutely. as we, I thank you all for sharing your journey and your experiences and your challenges. And as we get ready to wrap up, I invite you to share a message with our uh, members and all of our wonderful Croatian women of influence and our leading ladies and in favor of International Women's Day this year. 
Anybody? <laughs> Do I have to start again or <laughs> <laughs> or Antonia can take the lead here? <laughs> um, well, I think I already mentioned some one message or maybe two. Hard work beats talent and gender. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and um, bias. And bias, yeah. I mean, uh, so, well, my message uh, is just, you know, be yourself, don't think about biases, I mean, at all, uh, just um, follow your instinct. And um, I mean, we have to teach that lesson, first of all, our daughters, and maybe then they, we will change uh, this perception of the gender, who is stronger, prettier, or, or whatever. Um, I mean, I'm always trying not to um, compare men or women at all, or naglašavati u principu koje je zanimanje muško, koje je žensko. U principu i kad pričam o svom zanimanju, pričam kao da je to tako, ono normalno, isto kao što, kažem, muškarac može biti i šef restorana ili, ne znam, dizajner. Najpoznatiji svjetski dizajneri su zapravo muškarci. Ovaj, tako da u principu ono što sam rekla, hard work beats talent uh, all the time and as uh, Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do, excellence is therefore not an act but a habit, so whatever you do every day, just keep on doing and you will probably be the best at, 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 at you um, have chosen <laughs> to be. Divno rečeno, Lucia. Yeah, then I'll, I'll just add something on top of uh, Antonia's excellence <laughs> that she popped out as an important thing. Uh, well, I'd say that, uh, I mean, so far we've uh, touched the reward and uh, in a way talked about um, the, the success of each of us and the success of women around the globe. Um, so my message here would be actually related to our own definition of success. Uh, I mean, for me, success means something for someone else or for each one of you here, uh, it means something else. Um, I'd say that the most important or one of the most important things in life is to really try to find your own definition of success. And as Antonia mentioned, not to compare with others, but to try to compare with yourself yesterday and, uh, and try to become something that you want to be tomorrow. Um, no matter what you do, you'll definitely be, success, be successful in what you do if you have some kind of let's say concrete path or concrete goal of of your successful future so that's it for me how beautiful Katarina, just, your turn finish by echoing exactly what the lady said um just follow your dreams um work hard to achieve them and don't get derailed by others and for our children i would also because i have boys and girls <laughs> Um, teach the girls um, to follow their dreams and that they can achieve anything that the boys can, but also to teach the boys that girls are just as good at things as they are so that both genders realize that it doesn't matter whether you're a boy or a girl, as long as you are talented, as long as you work hard, you can achieve that. Um, I think by focusing just on the girls, the boys will never change and we need to change their mindset as well. How fantastic. What wonderful, wonderful thoughts to leave us with. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for exploring, navigating risk and sharing your inside stories and being an inspiration that brought you to this award and continuing to be inspirations for everyone. Thank you very much. And to all of our uh, viewers and to all of our Croatian women in the network and around the world, we wish you all the best, much continued success. We also want to wish everyone a very happy International Women's Day. We toast all of you and we hope you do something special today to toast yourself and the women around you. Živeli svima, svetan međunarodni dan žena. Svetan dan žena.